All right, when Nokia to report Q1 earnings, what's in the cards? It says here. All right, so tomorrow before the opening bell, we're going to have to know uh, what's going on. Now, in the last reported quarter, the company delivered an earnings surprise of 25%. It pulled off a trailing four quarter earnings surprise of 205% on average. The Finland based telecom equipment provider is expected to have a record year over year low revenue. Uh, low revenues due to supply chain constraints, right? So that's what's expected. Does it bother me if that's actually going to come true? Because it might actually pull off a great earning surprise, right? Um, doesn't really bother me personally speaking for me and not trying to play it smart, but I did buy this at $2.85. It's at 502 now. So it's it's no problem with me whatsoever. It is a long term buy. I'm holding this for quite a few years now and there's there's no problem whatsoever. Uh, personally speaking for me. Now, when you buy a company and you believe in it for the long term, don't really get uh, um, so into each quarter. Look at it on a one year average or a two year average and uh, decide from there. During the quarter, Nokia extended its partnership with Tele2 to deploy 5G RAN. We're going to look at some things to try to get an idea of what's going to happen with Nokia tomorrow before the opening bell. So they did have a partnership with Tele2 to deploy 5G RAN in Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. They have that Romania. Uh, thing going with or they're challenging by court uh, to get the decision reversed in favor of Nokia. Nokia was also selected by Wintray in Italy. In the first quarter, Nokia inked a deal with Zyn KSA to expand operator, the operator's digital infrastructure and enhance its network capabilities. Uh, Nokia was selected by also Equidium Health to help uh, the U.S. based company jointly develop and deliver healthcare use cases by covering by using sorry Nokia's data marketplace solutions. Some things that are pointing out to really cool stuff, right? Um, and might actually turn in a, a great surprise to more earnings before the bell. They also have a repurchase program where they have a uh, agreed that the um, members, uh, board members, and so on. Uh, they will repurchase $600 million worth of Nokia shares, a buyback, Nokia to supply data center switching portfolio for Microsoft data center networks. So with all that being said, it seems like Nokia is really on the right track. It is. Uh, it's it's going to be a slow, um, like I said when I bought it at 280 something, I had said that it's going to be a slow uh, transition into a new Nokia, let's say, because the stock really for the past five years hasn't really gotten anywhere for most people, but it also depends on when you buy it. Uh, if you bought it at a dip like I did, but it's going to be a slow transition going forward. It, at, at some point, it's going to get off this whole track of sideways in you know uh, moving. There's, I, I believe Nokia by to, by end of 2023, in my opinion, will be at seven bucks, and that's awesome, right? So the company is enhancing its outside of China. Nokia holds 20% market share, excluding China, right? 20% uh, uh, market share in the worldwide telecom equipment market. The business strategies under the new le leadership uh, have reignited the company's potential, and I really believe in this company. Uh, once known as a market leading mobile maker, it's no longer that, right? Um, the company has moved to engage in different operations, and the company shares are currently trading at a little over five bucks. Since the change in leadership, Nokia has announced a three-phase change in the business model. And uh, by, by January 2021, they said that the first phase was effective and completed. So we still have within the next five years, all these other phases to uh, really unravel themselves. One of, the, one of the things that they're into, we'll, we'll look at the, all the different things that they uh, want to become leaders in. Mobile networks, the segment offers radio access networks. They want to be the best at that. Network infrastructure, the segment compromises IP networks, which provides IP networks and services for the residential, mobile, and enterprise and cloud applications. Now let's look at a chart real quick. For the year 2021, the IP networks for Nokia were up 5% year over year. Their optical networks were up 2% year over year. Their fixed networks were up 35% year over year. And their submarine networks were up 33% year over year. So cloud network services is another thing Nokia is into. This segment is built around software and the cloud, focusing in on in-cloud native software as a service. They also have the Nokia technologies. Uh, this segment re uh, records the majority of net sales and related costs and expenses attributable to licensing and patenting the patent portfolio of Nokia, which is actually really big, over I think 4,000 plus patents. For the year 2021, net sales were 1.5 billion. Their uh, net sales were up 8%. 
operating profit of 1.2, continued industry leadership with over 4,000 patents, strong execution in 2021, and had it not been for the supply constraints in 2022, which we'll see, we'll see, might not actually be as bad as we as it is said, Nokia will give us the first, um, actually they'll give us everything we need to know uh, tomorrow before the bell. Not just what the revenue was, but the forward year guidance, which is the most important thing. And that's what I'm looking at. I want them to beat the estimates as far as revenue and all that. But obviously, I want also to see a forward year guidance that's not going to be as bad as uh, they painted out to look like, uh, to seem. Um, and so that's that. Um, either way, I'm still going to hold Nokia for uh, another five years. I don't want to. I don't want to sell it this year. I don't want to sell it next year. Uh, Nokia is one of the three non-Chinese firms left in the 5G hardware space, and that actually makes this uh, stock extremely attractive to me and very bullish. Along with Ericsson and Samsung, that's pretty much it outside of China, out of, outside of Chinese companies um, in the 5G uh, hardware air, uh, industry. And you know what, Ericsson has had some scandals lately and all that and troubles. And that really leaves Nokia and Samsung, really, if you think about it, as pure play, great companies with no problems. So one thing that will help the stock rally is moving moving forward with its proposed dividend distribution and $600 million share buyback, right? So I think that as they, if they can, uh, in, you know, with, with a dividend, uh, Nokia would um, attract more people. And uh, so that Ford did the same thing and then it took off from, you know, uh, but I think that, yeah, it will, it will be a boost for the star. So that's pretty much it in a brief way. I think the Nokia will be fine. I think that tomorrow they're going to report great results. I don't think they're going to be negative. I think they're going to be great. And uh, it is a long-term hold still for me. Thank you very much for watching this video. Wish you all the best. Take care.